Hey guys, Doug with another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today I'm talking about something that we've gotten several calls over the years about, something that has also frustrated me on my own projects, and it was a little bit unexplainable, but the solution and the answer is kind of simple. So I'll dive right in. We're talking about Hall Effect sensors. Now these can be used on ABS style rings, on the wheel speed sensors, uh, drive shaft sensors, on crank sensors, cam sensors, and everything in between transmissions, you name it. And uh, basically the concept is you have these metal teeth uh, like our drive shaft wheel has, and they go past a sensor. And there's just a variety of sensors on the market. And basically this is steel and this has a magnet element inside. And uh, the, they're, you know, when they cross paths, that's how you get your signal. The problem in lies is that every once in a while you'll have somebody with a crank sensor or a drive shaft sensor and they just can't get a good signal and they're like everything's square, everything's uh, lined up, the gap is right and I'm just getting a noisy signal and you know we kind of chased it around for quite some time and uh, a good friend of ours, Glenn Payne, Mad Racing Parts, he actually spent some time uh, he was frustrated at a couple of customers that just had intermittent issues with drive shaft sensors that were noisy and uh, that shouldn't be. The way these sensors are designed, they're a cleaner noise or cleaner signal than a uh, traditional magnet style sensor and they work really well um, about 99.9% .9 of the time. What we found is that uh, if you actually cut apart the sensor, if you watch these videos, I actually took perfectly good sensors and cut them apart. You'll see inside of these sensors, there is a small strip um, lined up, and that is your uh, magnetic element inside of there. Now, that's how they pick it up. And if you look at the size of the sensor versus the strip, that can be a little bit misleading because if you're um, lining things up here, you're thinking that, you know, hey, this thing's square in the middle of it. It should be good to go. If you really consider that strip, how much error can be inside of that, when it's actually lined up, if you line, um, see if I can get this visual. If you think you're lined up perfect, but yeah, maybe you're a hair off, you might only be catching the edge of that strip on this huge sensor. You think you have like this huge buffer because you have a huge sensor, but if it's lined up like this, you're gonna get noise and that almost looks like it's in the center. Imagine being underneath a car uh, or whatever and you're just kind of guessing. You're only catching the edge of that little strip. And what Glenn found is he put a, several uh, different sensors on a bridge port and spun them. After having some inconsistencies between good and bad signals, we realized, or he realized, that if you just turn this thing a quarter of a turn, it's going to pick up the teeth going by. So imagine all the years we fought trying to diagnose some of these intermittent signals, whether it's on a crank sensor or a drive shaft sensor, or what have you, and only to realize that even though it looked right, we all, I think, in our minds thought this was a whole sensor on the end. If you turn this thing a quarter turn, you're going to clean up the noise. You now have a good, uh, a good path of a signal going by. Now, I went ahead and cut apart several different types of sensors. I cut apart uh, our own, and these are just a cherry sensor. Tons of people use them. They're really good sensor, and they work really well. If you can see, this one's actually offset it's in there, that little line off to the side. It's not even perfectly centered. So imagine if you had your drive shaft wheel centered on that one, you could completely miss it. Not even get a noisy signal, get no signal. I've cut apart several other sensors and there's a lot of them like that. And one of the issues is when you're depending on potting, which is the silicone that holds everything in place, you're drop, I'm assuming they're dropping that element in there. And uh, when they pot it, it then misaligns or it can get crooked or off to the side and there's definitely room for error. Now I cut apart another small race pack sensor. Uh, this one isn't as easy to uh, determine because we only got to the wires and then when we got the end off it was um, really unrecognizable. So you know when you're working on setting this up on a crank sensor I had the same issue one time with an EFI system. We had the stock style uh, Hall effect sensor on the crank trigger wheel and in the factory location in the back of an LS was having a ton of noise and the car was having a really difficult time running. It was an aftermarket engine. Of course, there's a lot of room for run out on sensors and everything like that. And unfortunately with those applications, you can't actually move the sensor. 
So imagine, you know, those are big old plastic sensors and uh, they're the same way. They have a small element at the end and uh, they're just depending on everything being lined up. So by the time you grind a crank and you have a little run out and the tolerances are off, that is a lot of times why I think why you see that. So on that particular car, we moved the crank sensor out front and we got one of these big Holly uh, black plastic sensors, uh, as you can see in this picture right here. And this thing really is, uh, gives you a false sense of confidence because you have this huge thing and you're like, it's perfectly centered. Well, if it's offset in there, it could be offset by a mile. So with that particular setup, we ended up just going ahead and I just kind of was shooting at straws one day and I spaced it out a bunch and offset it, which seemed totally illogical but it made the car run and it ran perfectly and never had another issue with uh, losing crank signal. So it shows you how all of these brands, all of these sensors, um, A, the way they're designed with that small strip leaves a lot of room for error. And then if they get potted slightly off or something like that, which obviously they do, um, you know, just offsetting that is enough to put it back into place. But if you don't know that, it can really be frustrating. So. What I've, uh, what Glenn talked about and uh, what we've decided is that if you have a noisy sensor, just make it, give it a quarter turn, quarter turn to freedom. That'll work on drive shafts, crank sensors, all that stuff. And uh, you know, you're just basically looking for those teeth to sweep by that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's straight line or this. And even if it's a straight line, I feel like there's a lot of room for error and noise um, because you know, you're going past a small skinny strip versus crossing a, a uh, perpendicular path. The other nice thing is if you get a small sensor, like we have an ultra case sensor that we sell, um, and this thing's all made in the USA, it's a very nice piece. And the people that run it say it's the cleanest signal they ever got. And uh, if you look at how small that is um, compared to any tooth wheel, it's gonna basically take up the whole tooth. Now that might be a little bit harder to align, but obviously we know just having this land anywhere on the sensor isn't really a good, um, a good place to be. So getting this centered on this small sensor, you can guarantee that it's going to go past the magnet inside of that and give you a clean signal. So whether you're running a drive shaft sensor or crank sensor or anything else with a Hall effect, now you know what it looks like inside. If you have a bad signal, turn it a quarter turn, it'll clean things right up and you will be passing the sensor rather than passing the side of it. Thanks for tuning into this Tech Tip Tuesday. We will see you guys later.